Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. In this episode, we're going to talk about recommender systems. Let's start with the basics. What is a recommender system? When I run my workshops, quite often I'm going to also discuss about recommender systems. And one of the things I like to do when this topic comes up is to ask my audience, okay, have you ever used a recommender system? Many of the people in the audience will say, no, we, we don't really know what that is. And then I'll reply and I'll say, no, you're lying. <laughs> you have used the recommender system. You know what the recommender system is, even if you don't know it. And everyone would be like, what? And then I'll say, look, have you ever bought anything from Amazon? Or do you have a Netflix subscription? or a Facebook account, or Instagram account, or are you reading news on Google News? Well, if the answer to any of this is yes, then you have used the recommender system. So what is a recommender system? Well, a recommender system is simply a technology that helps us deal with the problem of information overload. So you as a consumer, you have an infinite number of choices in anything. Yeah, so infinite number of products and content to consume every single day. So how can you find the best products for you, for the problem you're facing, which could be anything from entertainment to food, by spending the least amount of time? So recommender systems, they simply learn our preferences and then they use these learned preferences in order to recommend, hence the name, products or services to us, which we are very likely to like. And how do they do this? Well, recommender systems as a field, they have been around for a long time. Amazon and Netflix are two of the companies that pioneered this field, and not the only ones, but they had invested, they are still investing huge amounts of money in order to improve recommender systems. And there are various ways to achieve this goal. In brief, there are three main approaches to recommendation. One is content-based filtering. The other is collaborative filtering. And the final one is supervised learning. So in content-based filtering, we simply come up with a description of the items and the users. And then we match users to items that uh, have a similar description. So if, for example, you know, for someone has interacted with our website and they have always purchased, I don't know, the same type of clothes, then we come up with some sort of description, let's say, for this user. This description essentially says that, yes, this type of user likes this type of clothes. And then we match this user to clothes very similar to the ones that this user has purchased in the past. So that's a very like, high level description. The actual implementation is based on vector similarity measures, but I don't want to get too technical here. If anyone wants to learn about the technical details, feel free to contact me through the datascientist.com website. This is one of the most basic approaches in recommendation engines. And what is very interesting with this approach is that you don't really need to have much data on a user. You just need to have very good knowledge of the domain. So if someone new joins a platform and you can get their preferences by asking them a few questions, and then they can simply match them to different types of products. So that's one approach to recommender systems. Another approach pioneered Netflix and Amazon is collaborative filtering. So this is largely based on the idea that birds of feather flock together. That is, this algorithm tries to put you into a group of users based on your behavior, and then the algorithm will show you items similar to the ones that this group of users bought in the past. So let's say that you log in into Amazon and you buy a few DIY tools. So Amazon will place you in a bucket along with other DIY enthusiasts and then it will 
identify that you know this group of DIY enthusiasts uh, usually buys I don't know around seven, eight, nine tools or, or whatever, and it will start recommending these tools to you. Yeah, so that's a very you know straightforward idea. I mean, there's also you know it also really corresponds to our everyday experience. Like if you see someone dressed in a particular style, then you will immediately place this person in you know a particular tribe of people. And you would be safe to assume that, you know, this person, if I don't know if this person listens, let's say, to some kind of music, maybe heavy metal music, they are very likely to like, you know, jeans or leather jackets, because this is what people that listen to heavy metal are usually wearing, you know. So obviously there's some stereotyping taking place there, but this is what recommender systems are about. Yeah, they're about coming up with, you know, some stereotypes of what, people like you are going to like and then recommend products to you. So finally, the last way to build a recommender system is through supervised learning. For those of you who have never heard this term before, this is the most popular type of machine learning. And using supervised learning in a recommendation engine, we try to predict things like whether someone is going to purchase an item or at least like an item or view an item or you know, in some way be positively predisposed towards an item. So if you have enough data, if you have a large user base, let's say more than, I mean, large again, depends on the domain. Large in one domain could mean a million users. In another domain, it could mean a thousand users. But if you have a large enough user base, then, and a number of interactions, obviously, then building a recommendation engine based on supervised learning is a great idea. Supervised learning offers many benefits. The main one, in my opinion, being that there are so many great algorithms in supervised learning that, you know, it's very likely you're going to find something that works for your particular problem. And obviously, all these methods I discussed earlier, content-based filtering, collaborative filtering, they can be used alongside supervised learning in a hybrid model. The approach I personally recommend to my clients is to First, start with something simple, like a content-based filtering algorithm, and then start adding other components. Yeah, solely because content-based filtering is very easy to develop a content-based filtering engine. So, you know, if you're in a company in the B2C space and you service any kind of product or even a service, you know, maybe you're servicing content like YouTube, you know, or you are a job board, you try to match people with jobs or you just sell products, you're a retailer. In any case, if your business model is based around B2C, business to consumer, then it is very, very likely that a recommender system can help your business, that it can help you increase your margins and also improve the user experience. Because what a recommender system is about in the end of the day, it is about personalization and it is also about making sure that the users have the best experience they can have in the least amount of time possible. So you want to make sure that the users always have engaging content to interact with if you're a company like Netflix. And if you're Amazon, you want to make sure that the users are going to find items they're really going to like and they're going to buy more. Yeah. So in any case, if your company sounds somewhat like that, then make sure to read more into the topic. I also have written about recommender systems on my blog, thedatascientist.com. And you don't have to be a big company to use this technology. Actually, if you're a startup, it would be best to start looking into how you're going to use this technology as soon as possible, because you'd have to plan ahead. Yeah, you'd, you would have to plan your data strategy in a way that you can make sure you can build a successful recommender system later on. So that was it for this podcast. Thank you for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.